No, I've been going through some kind of a tough times recently, and the Lord had me go back to a message that he gave me some time ago called Graceland. And I found so much food there, so much help in Graceland. I decided to preach again on what I call Graceland Revisited. Graceland Revisited, and my theme is Mission Accomplished. Now, the Jews went into Canaan, and we will talk a little bit about Canaan. But we have entered into Graceland. You have to know who your God is in order to really live. What is your mind about God? Uh, the prophet says in Jeremiah that God is going to give Israel the fruits of their thoughts. The fruits of, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts about God? What are your thoughts about reality? For instance, I am 75 years old and some people believe I'm living on borrowed time. But the fact of the matter is this, the Bible says with long life shall I satisfy you and show you my salvation. What are your thoughts? Is it that you're living on borrowed time or you're holding to the word of God? This morning I was asking God to help me to adjust my thoughts to his word. Forget the doctors and all the, the, you know, the, the politicians and all of that stuff. Even some of the preachers. And get the word of God. You see, because the Bible says that in the beginning, the earth was formless and void. There was a whole mess going on. And um, the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. There was just darkness. But you had the Spirit of God. You had God the Father. Then the word of God says, let there be light. And there was. What is happening in your life? What is the darkness? What is the mixture? The word of God is with you, in you. The Holy Ghost is in you. And God the Father, you sitting in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And he is still speaking to the darkness and the confusion saying, let there be light. And there will, if you hear the word of God, let there be light. And the light couldn't refuse. The light couldn't say, no, 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 God. No, I, I'm going to, you know, I, I'm going to spend some time over this. No, 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 no. When God speaks, it happens. And the Holy Ghost is there. The Holy Ghost is there to work the works of God. You know, so God created man. I'm going to go in the beginning because it's good to know your God. Some people accuse God falsely and wrongly, blaming God for everything that's happening to them. But know your God. I read the book of Genesis one night, and I got up from my reading, and literally, I believed a miracle happened to me because of what I saw there. So the Bible says God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth, subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every living thing that moves on the earth. That is your God. I read that. And I said, wait a minute, God had never took away that dominion. This is why human beings can do what we do right now because God has given us so much um, dominion, you know. Now, so God made man in his image and in his likeness. And the Bible says that God planted a garden in Eden. I'm trying to show you the God that we serve because, you see, we have a lot of concepts of God. But God is a good, good father. And God is good. And only in rebellion and sin, we suffer. We're chastened when we do wrong. We're not, you know, and then when we repent, he forgives. So the Bible says that now a river flowed out of Eden to water the garden. Imagine he put Adam and Eve there. And a river flowed out of Eden to water the garden. And from there it divided and became four rivers from the garden. Four rivers, four rivers proceeded from the garden that God can put you in, that God will put you in. This is why says, oh, your children are going like that. From your garden, there can flow rivers, 
rivers to bless the entire world. The name of the first is Pishon. It flows around the whole land of Havilah where there is gold. The name of the, the name of the, uh, wait a minute. Yes, okay. the name of the first is Pice, and it flows around the whole land of Havilah where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. That's what the Bible says. And the name of the second river is Gihon. It flows around the whole land of Cush, and you can go and look up what Cush means and all of that. We don't have time for that. And the name of the third river is Tigris. It flows east of Asia, of, of Assyria, and the fourth river is the Euphrates. Then the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to cultivate it and to keep it. After he prepared everything for man, he put man in the garden. Not to start from scratch, not to teach him how to cultivate, but just, just go and dress it. And that is the God that we serve. And the Bible says in Genesis 1.31, Then God saw everything that he had made. And indeed, it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And the Bible says God rested on the seventh day. And the Bible says in Hebrews 4 and 9, there remains therefore a rest to the people of God. God rested on the seventh day. And we are given a rest. There is rest, saints. I struggled, I, I, I was troubled for the past week and uh, Friday and Saturday for some reason it was just heavy upon me. Struggles and troubles and I hear the Bible is talking about rest. Where is my rest? Where is your rest? Are you experiencing rest? Are we living under the curse or under the blessing? You read the curse and you read the blessing and you check your life and say, where are you living? And why are you living where you are living? Sometimes it's a misconception about who God is. But when you get a real hold of who God is as a loving father, you know how to rebuke the devil when he comes. But you know what he's hitting you with. You're not supposed to have it. So God is a good God, and the Bible says. And he made it, and he said everything, everything was good. And there remained at a rest. And in Hebrews 4, 3, he says, For we which have believed do enter into that rest. Here how simple it is. The problem with us is a lack of faith. You see, the feeling takes over sometimes. There must be faith. I want to know truth rather than how I feel. The reality is in the word of God, not how I feel. So the Bible says that we who have believed, we have entered into that rest. Are you there? Praise the Lord. Now God started, you know, God started everything good. His intentions were good. His intentions for man was good. When he made the heavens and the earth and he made man, God could have made man as a baby and to learn how to struggle and how to fight and how to deal with the animal. He didn't do that. He made him in his image, in his likeness as an adult. Adam and Eve, they knew everything. They had everything except clothes. And they didn't mind that. It didn't matter to them. But they were, you know, that is, that, that is the God that we serve. It's as a good father providing everything. I would love to provide everything for my sons. He has provided, he provided everything. And you know what happened? They sinned against God. God's intention was good. They sinned against God. So God tried again. He raised up a nation, Israel. Second time God is trying. And the Bible says here in Deuteronomy, I'll read it, it wouldn't be on the board, 6, 10 to 11. Moses is speaking to the children of Israel concerning God's promise now to his people. To his people. Mark the pronoun his. So it shall be when the Lord your God brings you into the land of which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Mark this word, Abraham, your father, Abraham, to Isaac and Jacob, to give you large and beautiful cities which you did not build, houses full of all good things which you did not fill, hewn out wells which you did not dig, vineyards and olive trees which you did not plant. When you have eaten and are full, 
This is God's trajectory for his people. And you have to ask the question, what's wrong with us? What happened to us now? And when a preacher is preaching about the goodness of God, he is criticized as preaching prosperity. But if you want to see prosperity preaching, look at the Bible. There's more prosperity preaching in the Bible than anywhere else. Look at what God is offering these people. When you're eating a full, I said in the, in the first time I preached the sermon, when we were growing up in Grenada, I didn't know how, what it means to be full. You have breakfast and you're still hungry. You lunch and you're still hungry. You dinner and you're still hungry. You never had sufficient because our parents were not rich. But that was not God's promise to his people. And he goes on in Deuteronomy 8, 7, and 10. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs that flow out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing. A land whose stones are iron and, and out of whose hills you can dig copper. When you have eaten and are full, again we see it, you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. This is the God we serve. This is the treatment. He, this is how he treats his people. Why was the Lord being good to Israel? Why? He says it in Deuteronomy 7. And eight. He says, the Lord did not set his love on you, not choose you because you were more in number than any other people, for you were the least of all peoples. You were the least. Those of you who feel that you are the least in your household, the least in your church, the least on your job, the least wherever you are, God is choosing the least. It's good to know that God chooses the least. Sometimes you walk in an environment where you are treated as the least. Know this, that God is choosing you. Well, you don't have to look at look like Minister Simon and Sister Becky and these wonderful, talented people. You know, and feel jealous about them. They are good. God is blessing them. God is blessing you too. You could look like me. That's okay. God will bless you. <laughs> but it's the same, I don't have, I don't have, um, I don't have, what's his name? Um, Jason, so I had to pick on you. I see Simon, sometimes he looks like Elvis Presley, you know, and he's playing this thing, you know. But you guys do a wonderful job. I really want to encourage you. And I know you work hard. I just, you know, just to deviate a bit. But the point I'm trying to make is this. The Bible says you were the least. The least. How do you feel in your life? How do you feel in your marriage? As a wife, is your husband you know, treating you badly? As a husband, is your wife disrespecting you? You feel less and least. That God is seeing and God is choosing the least of all people. He says, but because the Lord loves you, and because he would keep the oath which he swore to your fathers, the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand. And redeemed you from the house of bondage, from the land of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Now when the enemy came against Israel to curse Israel, you remember they hired a man to curse Israel. Balaam, the Bible says, nevertheless, the Lord your God will not listen to that man, Balaam. But the Lord your God turned the curse into a blessing for you. Because the Lord, your God, loves you. 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 The Lord, your God, loves you. And no man can curse you. And no man could withhold your blessings. This is the word of God. And the word moves with the spirit to say, let there be light. And there will be light if you say what God says. Nothing is wrong with us. Nothing is wrong. We are at least, at least you can say we are like Israel. But sometimes I want, I, I, as a matter of fact, I, I kind of want to believe that we are in a, even in a better place. The Bible says in 1 John uh, 3 and 2, Beloved, speaking to us now, Christians, the days, the age of Israel is over. You know how they messed up. But all these wonderful promises, can you imagine that? 
that they would sin against God and serve other gods. I don't understand how it happened. I'm not criticizing them because sometimes we do the same thing. Yeah, we leave the way of God and follow the ways of the world. But the fact is they messed up and they went into captivity and they failed God. And the land that God gave to them that was supposed to be a blessing, it became a curse to them. But now the Bible is saying, beloved, now we are children of God. And it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know. When he shall appear, we shall be like him. We shall see him as he is. We are now the children of God. Tell me something. Who could a father love more than his children? Think about it. A good father. Who could he love more? I'm not talking about a father who, you know, leaves his children, you know, and go away. So I'm talking about a good father. Who could he love more than his children? And the Bible is saying, beloved, beloved, now we are children of God. Think about the love. That same love, that same creator God is who we're talking about. And the Bible says in Galatians 3.26, you are all sons of God. Wow. We are children of God. How did it happen? He says how it happened. Through faith in Jesus Christ. Simple, not by keeping laws and rules. Through faith in Jesus Christ. Not by getting circumcised, but through faith in Jesus Christ. And who was this Jesus? I know we know Jesus. We talk a lot about Jesus. But sometimes we need to kind of go back and really see the reality of Jesus of Nazareth. A man walking the street like any other man, you know. I mean, if he, were, if he had come today with a suit or whatever, maybe we, we might not have believed on him. We could believe in him now because we're not there where they were. But the Jesus of Nazareth, you see, now after God's pleasure, which is earth, became corrupted, okay? Now through the earth, God intended to bless man. He intended to make mankind through his earth but after that was corrupted, he brought forth another pleasure of his to which and from which to bless mankind. The earth from which he made man, to which he wanted to bless man, was corrupted. Now he brings forth another of his pleasure, his son. His son was that other pleasure. When his son appeared on the scene. And when he was baptized, after his baptism, the Bible says that a voice came from heaven and God Almighty endorsed Jesus of Nazareth. They knew him as a carpenter's son. But God Almighty endorsed him. A voice came from heaven in Mark 1.11 and says, You are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Remember the first creation was good. It was very good. It once pleased him. But here he's saying, you are my beloved son in whom the completion of God's pleasure was in his son. Well pleased. And that was an endorsement. And so the son sent out preachers, evangelists, or disciples all over the world to preach the gospel. To preach the gospel, to make us sons and daughters of God, the Bible says we are accepted in the beloved. Ephesians 1 6, we are accepted in the beloved. I'm trying to position your mind and your spirit to who God is and who you are and where we are. And when the struggles and the troubles come, you know, you know how to fight against it. God is well pleased with his son. And we are accepted in that son, the beloved. That's where we are. The result of that was that the blessing of Abraham, remember I told you to mark Abraham? The blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seeds. As according to the promise, we just read the promise going into Canaan, into the good land. And we are heirs 
Now, here's the promise again. Let us go back to Deuteronomy 16. He says, so shall it be when the Lord your God brings you into the land of which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, and he mentioned Abraham, and he went through all the promise, right? That is the promise he's talking about. And God has not changed. He has also promised us, his people, today, a good land. It is more than a land. It is a state, a super state of being called salvation or being saved. It is better than Canaan. You see, Canaan was temporary. Salvation is unto eternity. In speaking about it, the Bible says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. In Canaan, they were to be full of every good thing. In this salvation land I call Graceland, here are the promises for Graceland. In 2 Corinthians 9 and 8, I think you have it there on, on, on your list. God is able, the Bible is saying about us, now the Jews went into Canaan, we are in Graceland. And in Graceland he is saying, God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. You hear all these alls? Amen. This is the word of God. This is not a prosperity preacher. I will read it again for you if you didn't hear. And God is able to make all grace, we're in Graceland now, abound toward you, toward us. That you always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. And Romans 8.32, the Bible tells us, He who did not spare his son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? All. All. You're talking about Graceland. I know we, we, we talk about Canaan, how wonderful Canaan was, and we sing about Canaan, but we are in Graceland, saints of God. Praise the Lord. And what did Israel have to do to possess Canaan, this good land? The Bible told them what to do. He said, therefore, you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to fear him. So the answer is, what did Israel have to do? Israel had to keep the commandments of God. Hear me now. However, now the new commandment is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The Bible says in Romans 10, 4, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. Christ is the end of the law. All the commandments and all the, all the laws are in Christ Jesus, saints of God. When you go against a situation, whatever it is, and you say in the name of Jesus Christ, you are keeping all the commandments. You are bringing the power of God to bear on the situation. And sometimes, sometimes we feel guilty that we feel unworthy. We feel unworthy. But when you believe in the Son of God, Jesus Christ, he makes you worthy. And when you call the name of Jesus, you call in the power of heaven. So when you call the name of Jesus, bear in mind that you are keeping more than the commandments that they kept. Christ is the end. End of the law for righteousness. For righteous, you cannot be more righteous than righteousness. In the name of Jesus. So I want you today, saints, those of you who are going through, I feel like stopping now. Those of you that are going through, and I've been going through, but I know it's not going to last because it's not the first time it has happened. And it did not last. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I know it will not last. And there's one thing, two things that will cause us to fail. One is disobedience to the word of God. And two is unbelief. Unbelief and disobedience. So if you could turn your mind around now, if you could turn now, if you could, if, if, if you could turn your thoughts now to the word of God and belief and faith, if you can do it now, 
and obey the word of God. The word of God for us right now is Jesus Christ. Christ is the son of God. Jesus of Nazareth is the son of God. He came to take the sins of the world. It was sins that brought the problem to begin with. And he was established to take away the sins. He bore in his body all. All of our sins, all. If you would just confess, the Bible says, if you would just confess, he is faithful and just to forgive you for all unrighteousness and to cleanse you if you would believe and if you would declare the word of God, Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus I remember when I preached Graceland some time ago, I told you all that I, I'm going in Graceland with pains in my shoulder. I went in there with the pains, and I can't remember when the pains left, but they left. Ah, they left. I have had surgery. I've had, I had had um, prostate surgery, and they tell me that after you have prostate surgery, you can't be the same anymore. But I, you know, God healed me of cancer three times. No, twice. He healed me of cancer twice. And the third time, I believe there's a reason why he allowed me to go into surgery. And it's okay. Because I'm going into Graceland now, having gone into surgery. And I'm believing God in the name of Jesus. Not in my righteousness, but in the name of Jesus. That I shall have all the parts of my body restored. All of me restored. With long life, he says, I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he is my righteousness. And the Bible says here, we must put on a new man. You know, you cannot go into Graceland and stay where you are. Put on the new man in your mind. Put on the new man. If I tell you, <laughs> I, I told you the story before, I'll tell you it again real, 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 real quickly. My wife doesn't like me to talk our business, but Sometimes I can't help it. When we lived, when we lived in, 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 in Queens, no, when we lived in Queens, at, at some point, we had an infestation of, of rats. I don't know where they came from. And, and, and I, would be in, I would be in my room in the dark, and, and the house is in darkness, right? And I go into the kitchen, and there, there, there is on the stove, this, this, he's running, you know? I set trap upon trap upon trap. That's no joke. I couldn't catch him. Okay? One night after reading Genesis and seeing the glory of God, the power of God, I want to give the man. I came out in the dark again and I heard the same running. And I said, God is my honest witness. I never had faith like that before. And since then, I'm trying to have it again. I said, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I will catch you tonight. I said that. And I set the same little trap with the same little piece of cheese or whatever I normally put on it. Next morning, I got up. There were two mice on one trap. Two. Two. Both of them heads plumbed. Now, when I said I will catch you tonight, you see, those of you who know grammar, you is a plural what, pronoun. I didn't know who I was talking to, but then whatever was making that noise, I said, you. If I, you know, so, so, so I didn't realize it was two. But God heard. And faith was lifted up. And God knows I want that faith again. Because I believe in it. It happens, saints. If you would use the word of God with the power of the Holy Spirit. So the Bible says we are complete. We are complete. We are complete. We are complete in him who is the head of all principalities and powers. Oh, Graceland. Let's revisit Graceland, saints. And, and, and in Graceland, mission. The mission is accomplished. You know, we, we waiting. We waiting for the coming of the Lord, and that's good. But if you have to deal with all sorts of issues, life is so hard sometimes. And it's not, yes, things will come against you. You know, after I came out from surgery and thinking of people warning me, now, I'm not willful, but I have my work to do. My wife, my, my wife and I, we got to move boxes up the stairs. We got, I got to walk. You know, I, so I lift boxes and push boxes. I, you know, I did everything that normal people would do. You know, and, and I'm trusting God. So the fact of the matter is this. Graceland 
Jesus came to bring us to or into Graceland. And the mission that Jesus came on, things, the mission is accomplished. We might not be experiencing it because of how we live or what we do or what we fail to do. And I'm telling you, there are things that we do that can cause problems for us. I have witnessed it and experienced myself. And when I change, when I make a change, then I see the victory. So Jesus Christ, the Bible says in Luke 19, 10, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Now, if the Son of God came to seek and save that which was lost, you better believe he found it and he saved it. There's no way he's going to go back to heaven without pining and seeing. And that which, that which was lost, again, it's, uh, I, I like my grammar, that's neuter gender. He's not talking about woman or man. He's talking about a whole lifestyle. That which was lost. No, we had lost eternity. You know that. The Son of Man came to give us back eternity. So when we pass from this life, we're going on to eternity. To seek and to save everything that was lost. Everything. Now the Bible says in John 10, 10, the thief comes. The thief does not come but to steal and to kill and to destroy. Why did he come? He said, I have come, not I shall come. I have come that they may have life, that they may have it more abundantly. And that word abundantly means exceeding some number. I mean exceeding everything else. Jesus came at a time when Greece and Rome were in there. You know, Rome was big Rome and people were doing all sorts of lofty things. And, and, the, and he's saying they don't have life. All they were doing, they did not have life. They were in darkness and death. The Son of God came that we might have life. Saints, you can have life abundantly. It doesn't mean living in a big house. It, doesn't, it could mean living in a big house if you could handle a big house. It means everything. It means abundance. Abundance is abundance in every which way. Abundance of relationship. Abundance of health. Abundance. He said, I come that you might have life and you might have it. More abundantly. Mm. Mission. Mission was accomplished. If you would grab a hold of it. Oh praise the Lord. I have a house to sell. And I'm believing God. To get it sold. By the power of God. Not by man's. You know intervention. And all of the statics. All of the statistics. No 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 no. By the power of God. Because of that abundance, I got, we got to come out. We got to come out of the world system mindset. You know, mission was accomplished. And Jesus said in John 59, 14, as the Father loved me, I also have loved you. He says, abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in his love. He said, these things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. Mission accomplished. Your joy can be full. Your joy can be full. Uh, recently, I was, I get up in the morning and my feet will be, my foot will be paining me so much. They told me I have the, 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 the plant of, you know, whatever it is, a big name thing. Pain, 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 pain. But I keep thanking God for healing me. And God will show you things to do. And I, different little things he showed me. And, you know, I could jump up here and dance. No, I still feel a little hurt, you know, once in a while. And it, it still bothers me. But I know it's going to go totally. Because my joy has got to be full. I cannot have joy with pain and pain and pain. You got to rebuke it in the name of the Lord. You got to say what the word says. You got to tell the devil to go to. No, you have to do it. I, I, I really don't want to sound, sound proud or arrogant because, you know, the Bible says God resists the proud. But the fact of the matter is this. I have suffered much. I have suffered with depression where I wondered how anybody could laugh. 
I've gone through. Yes, yes, yes. If you know what depression is. I looked up from an eighth floor window and I look, I saw two young people walking and they're talking and they're laughing. I said, how could anybody laugh? In the nighttime, I wanted the day to come. In the daytime, I wanted the night to come. Don't tell me about troubles. My poor wife went through hell. We're there all sorts of situations. And the Lord has delivered us. Brought us out. And will deliver us. Will bring us out. Because why? He came that your joy may be full. I'm not saying you're not going to have problems. Let me tell you something. If your, con if your condition continues, besides praying and using the word, seek the Lord for a revelation about the, about the condition. When I finish preaching, I want us to take time and seek the Lord. Because the Lord will reveal. I could tell you things that actually happened where I busted my eye and I, and I didn't know it. The Lord revealed that I was doing it. While I was praying like this, I told you all about that. My hand went into my eyes constantly. When the Lord revealed that to me, then the problem in my eyes was over. I had, six, I had pains all part of me and the Lord showed me that I was the nuts that I was. The Lord will show you. The Lord will show you things that you're doing that's causing your situation to remain. I wanted to have a big, big party for my wife's 70th birthday. Big. Massive. And the Lord, the Lord didn't feel me. I feel nothing. And not, I had nothing. And the Lord revealed to me, you have to do the little things first before you do the big things. She didn't want the big party. That was not her interest. She wanted... The, the little things, things that I left out, things that I didn't do. So sometimes we have to search ourselves. When I backslid at one time, I sent for my horoscope. Can you imagine that? A child of God, I knew God. And because I backslid, I sent for my horoscope. And that is a no no with God. And that brought, if you, if any one of you are dealing with horoscopes and stuff like that, these things are holding you down, holding you back. We got to get rid of everything that gets in the way if you want to get delivered. Everything that gets in the way. Mission, the mission was accomplished. So search yourself and find out. I don't believe in constant Troubles, constant sickness, constant day after day. No, 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 no. There's got to be an end before Christ comes. There's got to be an end before Christ comes. And concerning mission accomplished, finally, the Bible talks about when Jesus Christ was born. And this is a Christmas message, but hear me. I will read it real quick. He said, there was in the same country shepherds um, living out in the fields, they're keeping watch over the flock. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Where is that good tidings of great joy if we are constantly in pain and poverty and agonizing and we cannot see it? Where is it? Which shall be to all people. Praise the Lord. Me too. He said, for there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Etc., etc., etc. And the Bible says, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill towards men. Glory to God in the highest. Peace and goodwill towards men. And we go back to Hebrew that says, there remain a rest for the people of God. And Psalm 149, somewhere it says, let the saints of God be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouths and a two-edged sword in their hands to render vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with feathers of iron. To render unto them, render unto your sickness, render unto your poverty, render unto your condition. The judgment, the judgment that is written, mission is accomplished. So... I have returned to Graceland. 
Let us stand and let us examine ourselves and call on God. Since life has a lot of twists and turns and ups and downs, but you are able. You are well able. If Israel was given such wonderful promise for keeping the commandments, we have the Son of God. The Bible says this is the end for righteousness. We have everything. I know the enemy is going to come and try to put thoughts in your mind, but fight. He tempted Jesus three times. He didn't stop at the first. Huh? He came again and again. So he's going to come. Get into the word of God and find out what the Lord is saying to you. Find out what is wrong. Because something is wrong. I'm not saying that you, we, we are sinners. You know, we're not sinners. We are saints. But you know, sometimes we deviate a little bit. We hurt our own selves. I hurt myself with what I ate, what I was eating. I hurt myself with what I was doing. I hurt myself with how I treated my wife. I hurt myself. So I want you to just bow before God right where you are. As the music would play. And let, 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 let's ask the Lord to reveal. Oh God, oh God, reveal to us the things that, that we need to see. And what we need to do to me, to all of us. Because... The mission has been accomplished, Lord God. Our joy is supposed to be fulfilled, Lord God. And we are supposed to be walking in the blessing, not in the curse. Oh God, so save us now. Save now. Save now. Hosanna. Save now in the name of Jesus Christ. It is Christ, Lord. It is your son. It's not our righteousness. It is him, oh God, that we call upon. It is in his name. That we call to you. Touch everyone. Speak to everyone. Talk to everyone. Reveal to everyone. If there is something or some things that they need to make changes about Lord God. Or if they simply need to stand up and fight in Jesus name. But leave us not where we have been. Oh God no more. Leave us not where we have been. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your mission has been completed.